Gaussian splatting. What's that? It's a way to render stuff really high fidelity, really fast. It's a big deal because it's totally different from any existing graphics pipeline and is capable of rendering scenes that look like this at 144 FPS. The original research paper is 3D Gaussian splatting for real-time radiance field rendering. What does that mean? I'll explain how it works. Step one, take a bunch of pictures of stuff from different angles, and then use an old algorithm called structure from motion to estimate a point cloud from the pictures at different angles. Step two, take every point in the point cloud and say, you're a Gaussian now. I'm a what? A distribution that looks like this but in 3D and also can be skewed, which is what I like to call multivariate. Everyone calls it that. We also assign a color and an alpha. Now we can put all these Gaussians into one giant matrix with 16 columns and rows, one for every Gaussian. This is all the data we need to represent the scene. So are we done? No. Step three, rasterization, meaning turn all these Gaussians into an image. How? The simplified version is according to your camera perspective, project the Gaussians into 2D, then sort them by depth. Then for every pixel, iterate over every Gaussian front to back, calculate their contribution to that pixel, then blend them all together. Now we have an image. So are we done? No. Part four, training. These Gaussians don't have the right values, so we need to train them, meaning adjust the values of the Gaussians so that they produce images that look like the original images. This is a lot like training a neural network, but with zero layers, which is why it's so fast. The training also uses automated densification and pruning, meaning when a Gaussian is struggling to fit a detailed part of the scene, it splits into two Gaussians. And when a Gaussian's alpha gets too low, it gets removed. Now we have a trained set of millions of Gaussians that can be rasterized from any angle to produce an image. Okay, now what? Well, this is extremely new. It's kind of like when traditional rasterization was first invented, and then Doom came along and added shadows. And everyone was like, wow, you added shadows. And then came reflections, normal maps, indirect lighting, you know, the graphics pipeline. And this paper is basically reinventing step one. Now you may be thinking, isn't this the same as photogrammetry? No, because this is a rasterization technique, meaning it converts the underlying data directly into an image without the need for ray tracing, path tracing, or diffusion. So why didn't it exist till now? Because even though it's a simple operation, for it to look as good as it does, you need millions of Gaussians, which requires several gigs of VRAM. So is graphics about to totally change forever? Or is this a niche application like photogrammetry? Let me know what you think. And if you want to keep up with this more researchy stuff, follow me on Twitter. Thank you for watching.